So topic 5.1 is about information sources. And there really are uh, six subtopics in 5.1. Internal and external sources of data, primary and secondary sources of data, and data which is qualitative opposed to data which is quantitative. Okay, so let's have a think about, about this, okay? So internal sources of data, well, that's obviously data that you have generated yourself, okay? So within your business, there may be an HR department, a finance department, a market research department, so you might have a marketing area within your uh, business. And each one of these areas is likely to generate their own data, their own information from internal sources. So uh, it could be statistical information, it could be sales figures, it could be the results of surveys that you've done, customer feedback, um, you know, when someone's left a, a comment about a certain product you sell on your website, all this data can be collected and analyzed from your own internal sources. Sometimes data comes from external sources. So whenever we hear uh, about elections on the television, uh, we hear about polls that have been done. And they're quite often done by a company called Gallup. And Gallup are uh, an organization that do lots of sort of big surveys and, and polls asking people their opinions on things and how they would vote in the election and what they think about the political parties and so on. So the, um, the Labour Party, for example, might use a company like Gallup to try and find out what the mood is like in terms of where people are, are likely to uh, put their vote in a general election. And that obviously is an external source of data. If you need to find out about tax laws or how much national insurance people should pay, that comes from the government. That's an external source of data. So any data that comes from outside the company but is used by the company, well, that's an external source of data. Primary data is the data that you generate yourself. And secondary data is often the data that you get from elsewhere. And then we have the distinction between what's quantitative and what's qualitative. So you can see on this image here that qualitative data is usually to do with people's opinions about things, okay? It's, it's um, how good a quality do you think something is? What is your opinion on a particular topic? So the reason it mentions things like focus groups is because quite often, if you're thinking of launching a new product, for example, you might hold a focus group, you might show people the prototype, and then you get their opinions on what they think about it. So it's about the quality of something, which is often someone's personal opinion. They're not hard facts and figures, okay? It's what people think about things. And this often comes in the form of, text documents, audio, video recordings, sometimes uh, infographics and things like that. 20% of people said they thought it was great. 80% of people thought it was terrible. They're just people's opinions. Quantitative data is data that is usually facts and figures. Okay, and this is generated through things like uh, scientific tests and experiments. You might do surveys and ask people, uh, not necessarily for their opinion, but you, you know, you're collecting definite numbers. So you might get 50 responses to a question. Market reports and metrics. So anything that is a, a measurement of something that is quantitative data. So it's the quantity of something. So when we think about quantities, we think about numbers. So, you know, what's the quantity of uh, oranges in, in five pounds of oranges? Well, there's 20. So it's all figures and it's numbers 
uh, rather than people's opinions, okay? So the difference between qualitative and quantitative is that qualitative is normally what people think about something and quantitative is the definite numbers that we have generated, um, you know, which you generally, you know, you don't argue with them. There's that amount and that, that's kind of it really. So let's have a look at uh, the kind of thing you might see on an exam question. So you can see here, a retailer is collecting information about new stock items. The retailer could collect the information from an external source. Describe what is meant by an external source of information. And part B, state one example of an external source of data which a retailer could use. Okay, so the context is a retailer, so this is someone who sells things to make a profit. Thinking about putting new items into stock and now wants to find out, you know, whether they'll sell and, and things like that, what people think about them. And what they're asking here is what's meant by an external source and what might that look like? So all you need to do here is explain for two marks what's meant by an external source. So it's a source of data which comes from outside the organization or outside the organization's systems. Simple, okay, two marks. And then an example of that, well, we're talking about retailers, so we already mentioned that it's to do with selling items and, and new stock items. So any document that would come from an external source that would relate to items in stock or new items in stock. So the supplier of that item and maybe what the price list is, the, the web page of the supplier, the, uh, any magazines that come you know, from uh, people within that industry, within that um, retail industry, you could maybe go and have a look uh, and see what you know, reviews maybe people have, have wrote about these items. Um, and anything else that's a reasonable suggestion of where they might get external information from uh, with regards to uh, stock items, okay? So it's not overly complicated. You just have to make sure that you understand the difference between internal, external, qualitative and quantitative and primary and secondary sources.